here we are. God bless you, everyone. <coughs> I'm so saints, God bless you. All right. Good to see people coming on right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to wait for a few minutes for those to come on board. you're on, I want you to just say hi so we know that you're on. Amen. Yeah. All right, we got a few people on. Just say hi in the comments so that we know that you're on. God bless you, Sister Marie. God bless you, Sister Terry. We'll be shorting, uh, starting shortly. If we can go ahead and tag people on this page. Brother Tyson, God bless you. Sister Evelyn, God bless you. Thank you for coming on board. <laughs> Today's word is going to be very powerful. And so we want to make sure we have as much as people as we can on here. God bless you. Bless you, Sister Sam. Hi, Kirsten. Kirsten, hi, sweetheart. That's our baby all the way in Texas. Amen. Brother Joey, God bless you. God bless you. If you can tag as many as you can. The word today is going to be powerful. It's definitely something that you would like to hear. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tagging. Thank you for tagging. Bless you, Sister Daisha. God bless you. See you all. Amen. Bless you, Sister Shani. God bless you. All right, tag as many as you can. We're going to wait just a few more minutes. God bless you, Sister Candace. Of course, I'm going to say God bless you. Sister Bridget, God bless you. Good to see you guys tonight on this beautiful day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor will be coming. He's writing some things down. He's just waiting for some people to come on board. Um, oh, what a powerful word today. What a powerful word. What a powerful word. What a powerful word today. Thank you, Jesus. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs all right thank you thank you thank you for coming on board we're going to be starting just shortly just shortly just tag as many as you can thank you jesus thank you father thank you father thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus brother wilbert good to see you man of god Sister Mel was there. God bless you. God bless you to the familia. Mama, Papa, good to see you guys. Pastor Nina, good to see you. Amen and amen. I'm going to make this a little softer as we get ready to share of what God has spoken to us today. Um, it was actually coupled with Mama May, who is a mighty warrior in the kingdom of God, 
she is, I think she is about 70 something years old, a woman that loves the Lord with all her heart. The, a woman that hears the Lord. And I tell you, Mama May is so special. And uh, Pastor and I just woke up just a little while ago as we was up this morning. Um, we went to the hospital to pray for one of our <laughs> members, Brother Joel. And I would like to say that first, an amazing testimony. Because how many of you know testimonies are vital for your growth as well? Even if he's done it in another person. Because you know, when you know that he's done it, you know that he'll do it. Amen. So um, I just want to share this awesome testimony from Sister Shani. She is my sister. Um, but Brother Joel went in because he had a, a AFib in his heart. Uh, his heart was irregular. And I think it was about 100% irregular. Um, but let me tell you about our God. Let me just share with you about our God if you don't know yet. But our God is faithful. How many of you know that he is faithful we serve such a mighty god amen he may not come when you want him but he'll be there right on time and when he says it is finished it is finished and our god is still faithful so i just wanted to share this really quickly that sister shani or brother joel had received a full healing from god he went in to do a cardiac uh, which is a heart uh 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 what is it called? Uh, ablation? Ab ablation. A heart ablation, which is a cardiac ablation. And my God, he had came out. The doctor said that everything went well. And the doctor also said that <laughs> he has no AFib. So let's praise the name of Jesus for who he is. Woo! Let's praise our creator for being our yes, healer. God. And let's celebrate because again, as I said before, that victory has a sound and it's the sound of celebration. Amen. So let's shout in victory as a sound of celebration to say thank you, Father, for your complete healing over brother Joel in the name of Jesus. We also have received today, and uh, we're gonna be sharing with you the message that God has spoken to us, but we also have received today, we have Pastor Bula in the house, God bless you. Pastor Bula, a uh, man of God, God bless you. And I tell you what God is doing in his life as well, uh, the miracle hands of God is at work. God is not dead. He is alive. I want you to know that tonight, that God is not dead. He is alive. What he says he will do, he will perform it. Can I hear an amen? What he says he will do, he will perform it. And just like the message this past Sunday, delay does not mean denied. It doesn't mean that just because things are not happening yet, that God had de uh, denied that request. What it means is it's being delayed for your good, not for any other person's good, but it's being delayed for your good. And God is going to do exactly what he promised he will do. Amen. So God is amazing. We want to say thank you, my king. I also received another text from another person who called me today. Let me tell you something. Let me, no situation that you are in is impossible for God to do. I want to say that again because I need you to get it tonight. No situation that you are in is impossible to God. With God, all things are possible. And you need to know that this morning, tonight. You need to carry on with that faith in knowing that if God says it, he will, he will perform it. And that's the God that we serve. And let me tell you, when I received this call, we've been praying for this person to be free and i tell you this he'll do it again and he'll continue to do it again all he's looking for is faithful believers those that says father i come in faith i believe in you i don't just know about you but i know you and because i know you 
alone. I can have the faith to, oh my God, because I know you, I can have the faith to believe, okay? I can have the faith to believe. So all glory to our King for these amazing prayer requests. All glory to you, my King. All glory to you, my King. Pastor, are you ready? All glory to you, my King. All right, I want us to pray real quick. That was not even the, the, the message, but I'm but that it's going to be it's going to continue to these are words of encouragement. I'm telling you this. I need you to buckle up because it's time for you to move. I need you to buckle up because it's time for you to fulfill the calling of God. It's time for you to truly know God and not just know about God. It's time for you to truly know God because let me tell you this. When you know God, when you know God, not just know what someone else said about him. I don't want to have that testimony. I don't want to tell people what God done in other people. I want to tell people what God has done in me. I need a personal testimony. And God has given us all a personal testimony so that we can know him and when we know him we can share the gospel of jesus christ and tell another person exactly who he is so that they can know him as well that's the god that we serve this morning tonight that's the god that we serve i want us to pray right now in the name of jesus father i thank you holy spirit for who you are I thank you for your word that is about to, uh, your word of encouragement that you're about to minister to not only the souls of your people here on the live, but Lord, those that will listen after. And Lord, that you will minister to my heart, that you would minister to Pastor Jeremy's heart. Father God, we come yielded. My God, we come yielded. Father God, we want to hear your voice, God. We want to know you. We want to have intimacy with you, Father. We want to fellowship with you, Father. We want to commune with you, Father. And Father God, there's no other person that we would want to rather be with, but Lord, to just be in your presence. Because when we're in your presence, Father, everything is beautiful. That we can go through trials and situations in, your, in our lives, God. We can go through, through the tribulations in our life. But Lord, because we know you, we can still have peace. So Father God, we thank you for who you are in our lives. And we bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen and amen. Before we start, uh, yesterday, <coughs> it was a very sad day for the UN Ohana, um, but a joyous day for Dr. Ewan uh, as he stood face to face and as he's standing, has stood, stood face to face with our King. Yes. I wanted us to take a, a one minute of silence because this man, he was a man of God. And I tell you this, he truly showed love. He truly showed love, not only in HHP. This is what I loved about him. He, he had no limits. He not only showed love in HHP, he showed love abroad in all different churches. This is the man, uh, this is the kind of man that I have met. And I tell you this, these are amazing, amazing uh, uh, family. Uh, the you and Ohana, they are amazing to see the love. And, and we want to, I want to take uh, about a minute to just be silent to uh, remember Dr. Adrian Ewan. Amen. A minute here. Amen, Father God, Lord, I pray for the you and Ohana. We declare peace, Father God, and strength. May your grace cover them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And may they experience your love everywhere, every moment of the day, Father. That you will be with them, Father God. That you will, Father, fill their hearts, 
fill their void, the, that void that they feel in the heart, that pain that they feel in the heart, their heart, Father God, with your love and your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen, amen. and amen. I wanted to do that uh, uh, tonight because uh, we, we, we like to do it for Memorial Day for those <coughs> that have served in America as soldiers. And I'm telling you this, we have to do it for those that are serving in the kingdom, yes. in the kingdom. Yes. And so we wanted to make sure that we have uh, set that time to just give uh, a, a moment of, of, of peace and a moment of, of uh, silence yes. to mem uh, in, in remembrance of Dr. Adrian Ewan. We love you. We love you, um, Ewan Ohana, HHP. Yes. We're praying for all you all. God is not done with you yet. Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to start this tonight. Um, we received a message from Mama Man. She told me this about a week a week before and i wanted to share this with you something that god had spoken to her and i tell you god is speaking and i just love i love uh, one thing i love about god is he never if you want to hear him he will not he, keep silent yeah. he will speak yes he will if you want to hear him and that's what i love about god and so tonight i want to we want to just uh open this up real quick and talk about the title of this um uh this live is knowing god what is the difference between knowing god and knowing about god right what is the difference between knowing God yes. and knowing about God? I'm going to give you the, the word of the Lord that the Lord had spoken to Mama May, if I may. From Mama May, words from the Lord, June 19th. It is for me as well as the body of Christ. I want you to pay attention really, really quick. The Lord said, do not take for granted. Let your... Don't, do not take me for granted. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no's to distractions. Again, I want to say it one more time. It says, do not take me for granted. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no's to distractions. How many of you are distracted tonight? Oh, how many of you are distracted? Then she said that the Lord said, what is it that you find that is more important than your time with me? What is it that you find that is more important than your time with me? The Lord says, obedience and submission is the road to peace and stability. Listen again, obedience and submission coming under Christ right. is the road to peace and stability. Mm -hmm. How many of you are unstable right now? Wow. Well, obedience and submission it's is the road, the road yep. to peace and stability. It says you will not attain it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Do you know me or do you know about me? And then it continued and said, I am light and I am life, but many do not like my light. They prefer darkness because the love of evil. Soon they will run to my light because of fear. Soon they will realize that they had no life in darkness, but sorrows, torment, pain, and no peace. For I am in me there is for the i am in me i am in me there is light and life as higher as heaven is higher than the earth today. and then it said today he said the lord said today for i am who are we talking Life about yeah. who are we talking about who's the i am he is god he, is yes. i am all-knowing Oh, my God, I thank you, God, my for God. being all-knowing. No matter what you talk, or no matter what you say, God says, I know your thoughts. Oh, I yes, am all-knowing. He says, <clears throat> I am all-knowing. I know the heart of men. What are you waiting for? Time is passing you by. And what are you doing with it? Call somebody and let them know their future with me is in danger. 
do not relax and become dull for the souls of many will perish for the souls of many will perish only when you only when you step out for someone else by pouring out can he refill you we cannot let the water get stagnant god is moving and god is watching I want to share with you tonight, and we want to encourage you tonight of these words. What is the difference between knowing God and knowing about God? Amen. I want to read with you, read to you in, Je in the book of Jeremiah on 31, verse 33 to 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33 to 34. The Lord said, but this is my, is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel uh -huh. after those days, declares the Lord. For I will put my law within them. What, who, what, what, what is his law? His law is his word. His, his, his word. Yes. I will put my law uh -huh. within them. Right. And I will write it on their hearts. Wow. And I will be their God. Uh -huh. And they shall be my yes. people. My God, what mm -hmm. an encouraging scripture this uh, tonight. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying know the lord for they shall all know me wow. from the least of them to the greatest declares the lord for i will forgive their iniquity and i will remember their sin no more declares the law uh, declares the lord he wow. says i'm going to put my law my word into Amen. our hearts this is what the lord says he says i'm going to put my word into them mm -hmm. and i will write it in their hearts and I, that i will be their god and they shall be my people. my people but i like this part when he said no longer shall each of you teach his neighbor no longer shall each of you teach his brother no longer shall each of you teach his sister and say know the lord no, you're going to know the Lord. You have to know the Lord. Amen. <laughs> it says, from the least of them, for they shall all know me. And so this is the heart of God. The heart of God is so that we can know him. The heart of God is that so that we can know him personally. Yes. Amen. Uh, if you don't know God, he can seem distant. Uh -huh. As you know, we have so many people who say, well, I can't hear him. I don't know what he's saying. I can't feel him. I don't know if he's even here. Well, it's because you don't know God. If you don't know God, he can seem distant and indifferent. Right. In fact, if you don't know God, when you hear the word, he can seem as though he's, he's angry or demanding. But when you get to know God, you will experience that he has a personal interest for you. That's Listen. Right. When you get to know God, you will know that he has a personal interest for you, both in the trials and triumphs Amen. of daily life. That's right. Amen. Amen. Both in the trials. So the Lord had me write uh, and check it this, check this number up. As of June 19th this year, there is 300 in America. As of June 19th this year, there is we have 330 million is that million that's me okay 330 million nine hundred one thousand seven hundred and four people that abides or that lives in america 330 million people nine hundred and one a uh, thousand seven hundred and four people who lives in america well what wow, pastor why, why are you saying that why what is that number why is that number so significant well the number is so significant because i wonder out of the three hundred thirty thousand nine hundred and one uh three hundred thirty million nine hundred and one thousand seven hundred and four people who truly know god how many how many I wonder how many people out of that 300, let's just, let's just round it up three. So I don't have to keep saying the numbers over 331 million yes. people. I wonder how many people who truly knows God. Now, how many of them are going through the motions and, right. and just knows about God, 
but says that they know him. How many of us have ever, how many of us had said that we know God, but truly all we know is about him? Right. How, how many of us have been living on the testimonies of others uh -huh. and not truly getting to know the Christ in which others serve? Wow. How many of us have, uh, uh, many people believe in an existing of a higher power? You hear it all the time. People will say, well, you know, it's because the higher power. They can't even say the name God. Right. They can't even say the name Jesus. They can't even mention the name Holy Spirit. But they say that they know God. So, but they but they believe in a existing of a higher power. How many of you have ever heard of people saying, well, it was a man upstairs. That's a disrespect to God. Right. Because he's not just a man, a upstairs. man upstairs. He's not a man upstairs. He's God. He's the creator of heaven. And yeah. earth. He's the creator of the upstairs. So we need. <laughs> Amen. But the thing is, how many of us say that he's the man upstairs? He's the one who has done it. But we don't know God. But we claim to say that we have a relationship with the Father. Now, I'm going to mess some people up today because uh, some of you may get angry and some of you may receive it. And I'm oh, praying that come. you receive it today. But I'm telling you this. Uh, just because you know about him does not mean that you know him. Yeah. Pastor Lou uses that illustration. Um, uh, that, that that illustration. Um, you um, know about people, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Exactly. The question. Exactly like that, with right? celebrities, and I'm going to let you know after that. But the question is: Is do you know him? Well, Pastor, I know him because I go to church. The question is today: Do you know him? Well, pastor, I know him because, you know, I read my Bible. I go on my app. You know the app that we have on our phones? I go on my app. It's a daily app. I, I read it every single day because it not notifications. Thank God for notifications because if there wasn't no notifications, the question is, would you do it on your own? My God. If there's no notifications, you will do. You will, The question is, would you do it on your own? If your pastors didn't tell you to spend time with God, the question is, is, would you do it on your own? If someone else wouldn't tell you to spend time with God, the question is, would you do it on your own? And this is where God has us today, is are you knowing me or will you know me on your own? Because I'm going to tell you this, you can't know God and say to someone that you know God, but you have no idea who he is. You can't stand there. You can't say that because the power of God or the spirit, let me just say this, the spirit of God inside of you will not penetrate to the other person because there's no spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. you How can the Spirit of God speak if you carry no spirit? When you know God, you're carrying God. Oh, Jesus. You're carrying the Spirit of God. You're carrying the precious Jesus, the Word inside of you. I am the Word of life. And you're carrying the Word, of which is Jesus, inside of you. But how can you say that you know God? Listen. I'm going to help somebody today because I think that this is extremely vital for you to understand because I want you to make it to heaven. Amen. I want you to make it to heaven. Yes. The road is narrow. The wide road is for those that is in confusion, for those that is um, 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 talking it but not walking it, for those that is in disobedience. The wide road is for those that is in rebellion. The wide road is, that is, is for those that does not want to turn from sin. Right. Uh, oh my God, does not want to turn from sin and turn to God. That's for the wide road. So yeah. all you people that says, I want to be on that, I want to be that few on that narrow road get ready to listen That's because right. you need to check yourself you need to check this is a time for a spiritual checkup this is what we're Amen. doing tonight we're doing a spiritual checkup tonight i'm sorry pastor oh, you're good. we're doing a spiritual checkup tonight why because it's time for you to understand and to know whether or not you're standing in christ that's right it doesn't, I don't care how much you talk to talk. I don't care how much scriptures you know. I don't care how bold you sound. I don't care how loud you sound. I don't care how much you move. I don't, I don't care because there's so many pastors and leaders and apostles and bishops and teachers that is standing, will stand before God and God will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of sin. 
You workers of iniquity. You workers of disobedience. Oh you God. workers of rebellion. I've tried to want. I have shown you time and time again that oh. I need you. I want to have an intimate time with you. But you didn't want it. You was too busy for me. You did not want me because I didn't answer you when you wanted to. So you turned away from me. Am I speaking to somebody oh, tonight? You want it. Yeah, you want it. Let me tell you, I'm speaking. The Lord is speaking to us as well because we have to live our life as though it was our last That's right. as though that it is our last people God. listen god wants to save your soul but i'm telling you this just because again we say this all the time and you're here again just because you say a prayer and say god forgive me lord i want you in my life i need you now and then uh, right after that you turn from you turn away from god uh not, a, not and you go back to your sin your righteous will not be remembered, the Bible says. That's right. What you've done before will not be remembered. That's that's the why. The, oh my gosh, thank you. That's the reason why. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the reason why for people who is believing that uh, once saved, always saved. My God, if once saved, I will say saved. Why are we trying? Why did Jesus die on the cross? If once saved, always saved. Why did we need a Savior? Why did we need a Savior to mm -hmm. die on a cross? Uh, and broken and, and being bruised and, and, and blasted. Right. Blood pouring out for us. Why? If all we had to do was, Father God, forgive us of our sins. Mm -hmm. And I am saved and I'm on my way to heaven. It does not mean that you say a prayer and say that I am saved. And say that, Father, forgive me, that you are on your way to heaven. Wow. People, I need you to understand it. I'm saying this out of love for you because I want to be the few that God, that the Lord, we stand before the Lord and on judgment day, as right. I had mentioned two weeks ago, what would you do on judgment day? I want to be the person that stands there and say, and the Lord says, well done, my good and faithful servant. How many of you, well, pastor, how come only you can be the one? Oh no, you got to make a personal, you got to make a personal choice in your life. This is what I desire. This is what I want. And the question to you tonight is what do you want? Do you really want to, to know God? Because knowing God costs many things. And I'm telling you, this is the, this is the part where people don't want to do they don't want to do this part because they have a life and the life is not in christ the life is part of the world i'm talking about the worldly mentality of life i have to work and have you know well get up or get up earlier well you know when i come home i'm too tired well if you know you're too tired well get up early and 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 seek the lord uh uh seek the lord before you start your day uh well i can't because you know i gotta watch my kids i can't because well get your kids together and get in with the Lord, get Bible studies together, train right. up a child as they may go so that they shall not depart from it. My God, my God, my God. And this is where we're at, people. The question to you tonight is, do you know him? So what is the difference? What is the difference? Pastor, I'm sorry. Just, just yeah. Hang with me here, okay? What is the difference? The oh, fundamental yeah. difference between knowing about God and knowing God is about what? Read this, Pastor. Go ahead. Is about what? It's about uh, between knowing about God is about personal relationship. It's about a personal relationship. Right. The fundamental difference between knowing about God and knowing God is about personal. Personal means one on one. Can I get can I can can I can I talk to you tonight? Personal, me. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to have people be. I don't want to hear this mess. Well, guess what? Then you're going to find yourself uh, in a judgment day when you, when the Lord says, "Why didn't know? Why didn't you know me?" And they right. say, "Well, God, I didn't have time. I didn't want to listen about it." Then why should listen to me? Why should God come inside and dwell in the people in a people that does not want to know Him? Why should God even speak to a people? that does not know him why should god uh, uh, uh speak to a people that does not even want to even know him that does not want him why should he so listen what it's saying is it's everything is about a, uh, a personal relationship because god is a person you can know about him but you don't really know him until you have a personal 
a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Right. Now, I need you to listen to this. I'm getting sweaty right now. I need you to listen to this real quick. Personal means one. One-on-one. -on -one. You're coming together one-on-one -on -one with Christ. You're wanting to know about Christ. You're wanting to... You, you're wanting to just bask in his presence one-on-one. -on -one. And this is what the Lord is saying. How many one-on-ones, how many one-on-ones you want with me? I'm going to tell you this. A lot of people want the one-on-ones because they need God. Now they need him to do something. That's the way. Now, as soon as they need mm -hmm. God to do something in their life, right. that's when they come together one on one. Lord, I'm going to take the time to pray. I need you to listen. But this is not what God is wanting for us. He's wanting to have an intimate, daily, personal relationship yes. with him. Now, because God is person, you can know about him. You can know about him. You can know about him, but you don't really know him until you have a personal relationship with him. For example, you can know, and I was, I was, it was uh, you know, Pastor Jeremy always used the illustration of Michael Jordan. I'm done with that part already. I'm done with hearing the illustration of Michael Jordan. But I want you to, you can know about, all about The Rock. How many of you like The Rock? The uh, Dwayne Johnson, uh, uh, he, uh, he's not part of, he's not one of my fans. But but how many of you like The Rock, the Dwayne Johnson? Well, you can know all about The Rock. You can know what his shoe size. You can know what he wears. You can know how he can lift both eyebrows up and down. You know all about that. You you can know who his wife is. You can even know his birthday. But just because you know about him doesn't mean that you know him. Just because you know about him doesn't mean that you know him and this is what's important just because you know about god doesn't mean that you know god again everything stems and you're, you're gonna i'm gonna tag you in a bit everything stems in a personal relationship with god you see you know somebody by how by spending intimate time with them right. by spending intimate time with them now i want to read with read to you in luke chapter 10 really quickly before i hand it over to pastor because i can take this whole time on this page and i i i i, I choose I, i'm gonna have him go ahead but i want you to turn with me to luke i hope you're with me tonight luke chapter 10 verse 38 okay here we go luke chapter 10 verse 38 and i know that i don't have my glasses so that's why you're seeing me squint so i, I know that a lot of people you of you uh, a lot of people knows this story but i want to go ahead and and say it again this story is about Mary and Martha. Okay, now listen. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet. I want you to listen to this, okay? So Martha welcomed Jesus into her home. She's the one who opened up her heart and said, I want you to come on in. In other words, this right. is what the Lord is showing me. She opened up her, the doors of her heart and said, here is Jesus. I want you to come on in. But then it says her sister, Mary, that was already inside her home. Her sister, Mary, sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha, the person who had opened the doors of her heart and said, come on in, was too distracted. Oh, listen to me tonight, people. Wow. If you can awful. just listen to me, this this is what the Lord is saying tonight. The person, oh, no, no, no uh, uh, let me cancel that. There we go. The person who opened the doors and said, come on in, Jesus, became too distracted for Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Her sister Martha sat at the Lord's feet when Jesus entered the home. Immediately, you see the intimacy? Oh, Lord, you're showing me now. You see the intimacy? Uh, 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 Mary, as soon as Jesus entered, there was nothing else that Mary wanted to do but to sit at the feet of Jesus. Oh, my God, I hope this is speaking to somebody this tonight. There's nothing that Mary wanted to do but to sit and bask at the feet of Jesus. Are you listening? Martha was distracted 
by the big dinner that she was preparing. Was it bad? Was it bad that, that was she was sinning. preparing? Yeah, you know, we say this, sinning. exactly. She, we would we'll say that, that, you know, Martha, there's nothing wrong. Uh, Martha, wasn't, Martha wasn't sinning. She wasn't doing anything bad. She was preparing dinner for her Lord. Oh, my God. Let me tell you this. That's what sin means. It means to miss the mark. Sin means when you miss the mark of having to be able to spend that personal relationship with the Father and you're too distracted to do so, my God. You're too distracted to do so. So here you have Martha was distracted by the big dinner. She was preparing. So she came to, the, to Jesus and she got upset with Mary. She got upset that Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Let me tell you how many people get upset because you get upset because you you sit at the feet of at the feet of Jesus. How many people get upset because you carry such a great anointing? How many of you? How many people get upset at you because um you, you hear from God and all of a sudden you have people saying, "Well, how come this person hears from God? How come that person?" Well, it's because I sat at the feet of Jesus, people, and this is what we have to understand is we cannot be distracted. So here you have Martha getting upset. She goes to Jesus and she says, Lord, I can just see her. Everybody. Lord, I don't understand. Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister is just sitting here? Doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister is doing nothing? I'm preparing a meal for you. I'm preparing something for you to, to eat, but my sister is, and I'm what they would consider as lazy. My sister <laughs> is lazy because she's sitting at your feet. My God, is this speaking to somebody tonight? It says, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Oh, oh my God. Let me tell you this. Faith without works is dead. Can I, can I say this again? Faith without works is dead. The Messiah was standing there face to face with Mary and Martha. Martha had opened the door and said, come on in. Turned around and got distracted and went to do what she thought, what she thought was okay to do. What she thought that was good to do. While, while, while a Mary sat at the foot of Jesus. Now I want you to listen to the response of Jesus. Jesus, she says, um, uh, Martha says, I'm just, I, 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 while she sits here, while I am doing all the work, tell her to come and help me. So, you, you know, Martha is angry. Martha is angry because Jesus is, uh, Mary is sitting at the foot of Jesus. And Martha is so angry because Martha is uh, cooking, but Mary is not helping her to cook. And she doesn't care because all she cares about is being in the presence of God. Oh, I hope this speaks to you tonight. All Mary cared about was to sit at the foot of her king. See, she believed, this is what believed me. She believed that the Messiah she believed that the son of the living God was standing before her. She believed that the, this man that, it, that has proclaimed to be God, is. she believed him to be God and she wanted to hear every word that he had to say. Now listen, the Lord said to, to Martha, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. For there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Now, what is it that Mary discovered? What is it that Mary discovered? See, Martha knew about Jesus, mm -hmm. but Mary wanted to know Jesus. And that's what Mary that's has discovered. Key. She discovered that I want to know you personally, my king. I want to know about you. I see you doing all these miraculous miracles and, and, and I see you healing. I see you delivering. I see your, your, how powerful your commands when you speak and when it, when you speak things happen. I am seeing these things and now I just want to sit at your feet because I need to know you intimately. 
And that is what Mary had discovered. She discovered that she needed to know Jesus intimately. And the question, see, Martha will know about God, but uh, uh, and, and in the end, Martha will know about God, and but Mary will know God. Are you a Martha tonight? Are you a Mary tonight? Will you know God or will you just know about God? You see, the way you know God is by what? By spending intimate time with the Father. Yes. In fact, those you hang around with, you will look like. I want to say that with you again. Those you hang out with, you will look like. You will blend in. You will, the way they dress, you will begin to dress. The way they talk, you will begin to talk. The way they respond, you will begin to respond. If you're in an angry crowd, you're going to come out angry. If you're going to be, you're in a depressed, a depressed crowd, let me tell you, when you're sitting by people and they're depressed and they're sad and, and, and not because of any situation, all of a sudden you feel sad. All of a sudden you feel depressed. Well, guess what? Those you hang around with, you will look like. So the question to you tonight is, who do you look like? Who do you look like tonight? That's why it's dangerous. It's dangerous who you spend most of your time with. That's right. If you spend most of the time with the world, you will look like the world. Are you paying attention tonight? It is important that you understand who you look like tonight. Because those you spend time with, you will look like. But when you spend time with the Father, when you spend time with the Spirit of God, guess what? Everything about you will transform. Right. It's like the message that I spoke this past Sunday, if you haven't watched it. But I eh, eh, take off your, get out of, get out of your grave clothes. Yes. Eh, let me tell you, Jesus starts from the inside. But there needs to be something manifested from the outside. The outside That's why yes. the Bible says that they will know you by your fruit. Right. By, oh God, by the way you look. They'll know you by the way you talk. They know you by the way you respond. They will know you by, by the way you uphold yourself. They will know you. Amen. Amen. I need you to understand this tonight. Because if you don't look like God, if you don't look like Christ, then guess what? That means you don't know him because when you know him, you'll take the time to spend. My God, listen, people, I need you to understand real quick. When you know Christ, when you know him, you will look like Jesus. That's right. Oh my God, I tell you this, I, I, I have a hard time trying to find Jesus in people. I have a hard time trying to find Jesus in people because so many people are saying that they look like or they're acting or they they are, you know, they act like wow. Jesus and they spend time. Let me tell you, when you spend time with the Father, so my God, it'll show out the glory of God, the beauty, the shine, the mag uh the 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 beauty, the 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 magnificent uh the the what what do you call that? Glory. The glory will will show all over you. Oh yes. When you know that someone is has spent time with the father oh you can see it outwardly. Evidence, yes. it, there, exactly that's the word i'm looking for there is evidence when you know someone is spending time thank you pastor when you know that someone is spending time with the father there will be evidence that's and right. that's the fruit let me tell you this let me tell you this if you're spending time with jesus I'm going to tell you this. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you'll know him. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you'll want more of him. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you'll love him. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more you'll understand him. The more you spend time with Jesus. You see, but every time what's happening is many people are looking for the, the things that they need in their life. And that's who he is. That's what he does. But we don't want to take the time to be intimate with the Father. Pastor, you have something, um, uh, 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 something to say really quick before yeah. I, before I continue. Oh, one of um, Galatians chapter four verse nine uh, says that. So now that we know God, now yes. that you know God, um, and then and then he actually put in quotations. He says, or not quotation, but in, in, in commas he put, um, or should I say that now God knows you? Yes. And so this is where it has to come to. It has to come to a very personal relationship between yes. you and God 
to where you're not just so many times we get so caught up in in in, in worrying about um things here here and there worrying about all the little things that we miss hearing the voice of god and that's that's really where it comes to jesus said that my sheep know my voice and so many people have not taken the time to get to know the voice of the one in whom how can you obey god how can you obey our lord if yes. you have never heard his voice right and many times we're, we're, we're so busy working in what we think he wants us to do or what we think we're supposed to do. Like Martha, she was doing what she thought, but we were missing the <laughs> moment of, he said, I'm not going to take away from Mary because she's found the key. Right. The key is hearing his voice. Right. Not just in the work that we try to do for him, not even in ministry. Let me tell you, not even in ministry. Many right. times we preach about a Jesus that we have not personally come to know. That is true. And God has dealt with me even as a pastor. That many times I'll go into the word and I'll read it to preach it, but not read it to 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 apply it to my life. Right. And, and and even though God speaks to, um sp speaks to us first as ministers, often it's like Lord, give me something as minister to people. Right. And he, and 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 often he's like, Hey, I want to just talk to you. I right. want you to know me. Yes. And so it's so important that we are we are growing in our relationship with God and coming to know Him, um, versus just knowing about Him. Yes. And you know, one one of the things that uh, we, we're we're seeing today is is especially in the church. And, and let me just throw this out there as a disclaimer, okay? Because I'm not saying that when churches open, and I know many churches are beginning to open again, that we should just stay home and be lazy about it and get comfortable and just and just and just say, hey, you know what? I really don't want to go to church today. You know, let's just watch it on the live. Um, right now we have no choice. I mean, for most for most of us that you know we 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 we're we're we're, we're gathering together on over the internet. Even right now, I mean, right now we're not streaming from church, the church building. Right. We're streaming from our home. This is in our in in our room, and so the, and yet we're still able to come and be here in present present with the Lord, right. and and still minister the Word of God and 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 feel the presence of God. And so it's so important that 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 even though I believe God has allowed this time. To get to to in order to get him out of the church building. Yes. I mean, Pastor, what do you mean? Uh, 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 you you can't put God. Uh, God is not always in a building. What 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 I mean is, many Christians, even though God is not bound to a building, only recognize Him when they're in the building. Right. Right. God right. is present. Yes. But it's like it's like they, that because that's the only time they worship. Right. It's the only time that they can feel the presence of God is when they're in the church building. That's why they're saying, "Pastor, open the church building." We're missing the point. Yes. The point is not not just that you only worship God in a building. Right. The the point is that we worship. We worship. See, the only place that people can experience God's presence is when they go to church. Really. Right. Is God only in the church building? So I believe God has removed us out of the building so that we can bring him home. So that we can, yes. So exactly. that we can experience truly him at him. home. Yes. So we can truly know him. This is where God is trying to bring us to. It, 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 he's always been there. But often we leave him at church or think we do. Yes. We think we do. We think we leave him there. And that's why the only place that we can experience him or the only place that we do experience him is at church. So now the house, of God. the house of God, I mean, mm -hmm. at a building, the church building. Uh -huh. And and so this is the thing that we have to understand. We have to experience God first in our homes. Yes. In, in fact, your own personal relationship with God should not only be on Sunday and Wednesday. Right. When when we when we would gather together in a church building, our relationship has to be on on a daily basis. That God wants us to know Him on a daily basis. You know, I was asked a question by a woman of God, who said. You know, Pastor, what about the Bible? The Bible says that that we're not to neglect the gathering together or meeting together. Um, <clears throat> and I understand where she's coming from. And 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 immediately the Lord spoke to me, and I heard the voice, of the, the word of Jesus, the, in, in what He said. He said, He said, wherever two or three, for whenever, and and, and it was that word whenever. It, it, I had to go look it up. It, it, it literally it literally means anywhere or everywhere. Uh -huh. He says wherever. Two or three of you Wherever, gather together uh -huh. in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Right. And so whether we are coming over uh, through a Zoom meeting, through the Facebook, through Instagram, oh, or even yeah. through a phone uh -huh. call, he's there as long as we gather together in his name. So yes. wherever we gather together in his name, there he is. 
So it, it becomes like what Paul said. Paul said that 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 even though I'm not with you physically, uh -huh. you see, we limit the spirit of God so much and we keep him in a box. As I'm telling you, I'm going to write a book called The God Box. I'm going to write this book because so many times we put him in a religious box that the only place that we can worship God, the only place we praise God is only at a church building. Well, guess what? God wants you lifting your hands in worship to him, even in your living room, even in your home. God wants to be with you where you are. You know, you know why? Can I, can I, can I, can I tag with you? You know why God wants, you, you know why it's so easy for people to raise their hands in a church building, uh, but can't raise their hands. You know what that's called? He's trying to take religion out of people. Oh, yeah. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get religion out of people. He's trying to get them back to himself. He's trying to get the 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 Israelites back to himself. That's what he's wanting. He's trying to get them to himself. Right. Uh, but but this is this. And as you were saying that, Pastor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so many people. And, and yes, when God says to open the church, let me tell you, we're going to open the building. We're going to open the building when God says so. Uh, um, under the law of, of, of the state. We're going to go ahead and do it. Um, but and the reason, the Lord, and when the Lord yes. says, but the, the reason why it's important for us to understand this, and I need you to understand this. I need you to get it real quick, and we're, get, we're almost done. But the reason why it's important for you to understand this is because so many people, and it can be you. You know who you are. I don't know who you are. I don't know who is it, but you know who you are. But so many people wait for sunday to sunday to get saved right. sunday to sunday to get delivered right. so they'll wait till they come into the church building to say lord i'm here now and jesus is like wait a minute how come you're only saying that you're here am i only am i limited in this right. in this building uh, why aren't you taking me where you're where you're at because we, we uh, let me tell you, Jesus can be anywhere. And I found this to be truth in my life that Jesus can go with me at Walmart. Yes. He can be with me at Foodland. He can be with me when I'm standing in the park. With, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm at the beach, he can be with me. He's everywhere. If only if I if if if, if I truly have a right a right a, relationship, a relationship with, him, with yeah. the Father. <clears throat> and this is what God is doing. Because if we cannot lift our hands, if we cannot get on our knees and pray uh, uh, outside of or, Sunday, well, yeah, anywhere. if we cannot do that, that means we're carrying a religious spirit. Yeah. And he's trying to remove religious people will not make it to heaven. I'm going to say this again. Because true intimacy when you know God and when you truly have uh, intimacy with right. God, you it's an automatic that you can praise God. Yeah. It's an automatic that you can spend a, you can go on your knees and everybody around you may not be on their knees, but oh my God, I have a relationship with my father. It's an automatic that I'm going to get on my knees. It's right. an automatic that I'll clap my hand. It's an automatic that I'll say, yes, God, I hear you. It's an automatic. But how many people, how many believers uh, uh, just, just lives, lives Christ on a Sunday? When Monday comes, you don't have no relationship with God. You don't even think about the Father. In fact, the word that was spoken to you on Sunday is no longer in you. You forgot what it said. You can't even, you can't even, uh, you can't even explain what the Lord spoke to you on that day. Oh, well, Pastor, the Lord didn't speak to me. Oh, yes, he did. It's just you didn't listen. And this is what's happening, people. God is trying to take away religion. And he's trying to pull us to relationship. Yep. I tell you this. If you can, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen to me, saints of God. If you cannot serve him at home, if you cannot serve him when you're at your job, if you cannot serve him when nobody is around, when you cannot serve him, if you cannot serve him in your car, if you cannot serve him intimately, then I'm tell you this, you are just going through the motions. Wow. If you cannot serve God intimately, wherever oh you are God. at, 
then why should any church doors be open? Because what happens is you should not get hyped just because, because the of praise right. and worship is singing. Right. They're singing your favorite song. You, you should not get hyped because the pastor is preaching loud. You should not get hyped because you you sense as though the Holy Spirit is moving. How do you know if that person is a false prophet? And they're looking like they are in Christ, but they're not. And you are agreeing with them and, and say, oh, come on, pastor. Oh, come on, prophet. Oh, come on, leader. Oh, come on, bishop. And Jesus is sitting there and say, oh, I know you don't know me. Because if you knew me, you would you already know that that, yes. that person is not of me. You see, intimacy causes you to be like him. And in intimacy, I want to say this really quick. Intimacy causes you to love what he loves and hates what he hates. See, this is the part that we got to understand. Okay? I'm going to say this really quickly. And Pastor's going to say something. We're going to close. This is the part that we got to understand. All right? Is that Jesus came face to face with sin, which is death. He hates death. He gets angry with death. He can't stand death. But see, we have an we have a intimate relationship with God, but we love death. Wow. That that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. How can we love something that he despises? How can we love something that he hates? How can we love something that he already overcame for our freedom? You see, when you have an intimate relationship with God, you will turn to Him and you will move with Him. Things you may not understand, but Father, I don't I, I may not understand it, but Lord, your word says, be still and know that I am God. So I am going to be still because I know that you are God. You see, I can't be still if I just know about Him. Because if I just know about him, uh -huh. why would I be still? Because I'm still confused as to who he is. But when you know him, when you have that intimate relationship with right. him, you begin to know the father. You begin to know his heart. You begin to, it's, it's, it's as though you're saying, Father, give me your eyes. The song says, right? Give me your eyes so that I can, that I see. can yep. see. Give me your heart, Father. For this world. That's what knowing Christ is all yes. about. So I want to say that. That it is important that you have to check yourself. It's a spiritual checkup. Right. As we get ready to close. you have anything right. more to say? One of the things I wanna, uh, wanted to say was. Um, you, you ministered a word on Sunday. About getting out of your grave clothes. That, that grave clothes <laughs> literally is for dead people. <laughs> and it keeps them bound. And so one of the things is we come to church. And, and, and it's like we, we raise our hands, we praise God there. When we come home, it's like we put the grave clothes back on. And, and it's like he's not alive anymore. He, he's, God is trying to get out of the, the church building box, per se, because many of us as believers have kept him there. We have to get out of this and bring him into our personal lives right. every day to be unashamed. Jesus, When Jesus said what, um, <clears throat> what goes on behind closed doors is going to be shouted at the hilltops, it wasn't just about sin that he was right. talking about. Because when you have a personal relationship with God, when, when, when you're able to worship him in your prayer closet, when you're able to worship him in your home, there'll be no problem for you to raise up your hands and worship him anywhere. together or anywhere with, anywhere with people. Because what is done in the, in the secret will come out into the, the light, into yeah. the open. And so it's so important that if, but, but, but if it's not evident in the open, is it evident at home? In the secret. In the secret. In the secret. And it's in the secret uh -huh. place of the Most High uh -huh. that we find our shelter. Yes. That we find our protection. Yes. That we find our whole being. Yes. And it's in the secret place. Yes. That though 10,000 are falling, though, um, though, ten, though thousands are dying all yes. around us, though 10,000 are dying, that these things not, shall not come. Yes. God is trying to be, wants you to be aware of him, even in your home. Yes. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. And this is the difference between knowing God and knowing about him. Well, Pastor, I read the Bible. Hey, we read we read a letter to you from Mama May that the Lord had spoken to right. her from the Lord. Okay? The reason why it hits more people yes. in some ways is because if you know the Lord, you'll hear his voice yes. in the letter. Much of the le uh, uh, of the Bible are, is letters that, that God spoke through his prophets. Yes. Through his apostles. And unless you know him personally, the weight of that word will have no matter in your life. Yes. But when you have a personal relationship with him. Yes. See, I could see when, when we were reading that, I could see Mama May saying it because I know Mama May. And and, and, and because I know the Lord, yes. I could hear his voice yes. in her, in in her letter. Yes, 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 yes. But if yes. I don't know them, if I don't know God, if I don't know Mama May, those words will mean nothing to me. Right. And so you can spend time in the letter of the word, but you have to know the God of that letter. Oh, yes. yes. And that's the difference between knowing about God and knowing him is you can know all about him. Oh, yes. But totally miss who he is. And, and this is what he said. Many are going to come to me saying, Lord, Lord, yeah. did I not prophesy in your name, yes. cast out demons in your name? I did miracles in your name. Your power flowed through me. It doesn't matter. And he says, I did not know. away from me. Because uh -huh. I don't know you. I know, about, I know about you. I made you. I created you. I know about you. But you didn't spend personal time with me. Oh, yes. That word knowing is a knowing between like even a husband and a wife coming to know each other uh -huh. intimately. And see, that's the key. Intimacy is not something that you do in public. Yes. Intimacy is private. Uh huh. And yes. so, you got that. And so, when you when you have a private relationship oh, with yes. God, you get to know Him on a certain level. That when you're out in public, you know, my wife can give me one look. I know exactly what she's saying. Uh huh. There are times when you know, I, I, I and, and and I love this that 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 you know, uh, she says stuff like uh. Uh, 25 years, 26 years we've been together. You don't know what I mean by this. You know, I, I'm still coming to discover this woman right. that, that I live with every day. And so that's, that's the good thing about God is that you can come to know him on a certain level and you continue to grow you continue in your to relationship grow. Exactly. with him. That exactly. he can just touch and you know what he's trying to say. Exactly. I want to I wanna, I wanna read this real quick before I hang up, uh, before you get off. Um, Sister Abigail Medina had wrote something. Oh and uh, I, I loved what she said. She said, for those of you who's not reading it, I, she said, the Muslims five times a day, they pray, pull out their rug and bow down to Allah. I, I, I often call him Allah. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> without shame. And the church is concerned about how they look before men. Right. Intimacy with God is not behind closed doors. It's out in the My open. God. And that is so true. It's Intimacy true is not in closed doors it is out in the open and it's i'll tell you though i tell you this one thing that I, and i'm done here and i'm, I'm, I'm done because i want to keep on talking but one thing that the lord had shared with me in the beginning of this year i created a, a, a an intimate place yes. so that i can come to know the lord so i can spend my time and it's in my bathroom i renovated my whole entire bathroom took everything out i put i put um pillows and yes i do have white pillows all in my bathroom oh, yeah. uh, everything is white and i i have a a, a nice sofa but i tell you this every person that goes inside this bathroom they can feel the presence of god and i just told somebody this two days ago uh who lives in texas one of our folks uh, that lives in Texas and they they were they were asking us questions and I said no matter what no one can ever say that they cannot or uh, they don't they cannot have the opportunity to know God because right where you're at the Lord is saying I need to speak with you I want to spend time with you I want I need I, I want to flow into you I want to give you more of me and so but what happens is we're all waiting for other things to happen and thinking that that's okay but we're missing the the, the intimate time with the Lord and this is what I shared with her real quick and I'm almost done I said what I need you to do I said your fire I need you to pay attention your fire should never die out. Oh my God. You can get lit with fire inside the church. 
inside the church building when the services are over are, 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 when, when you're in the house of God <clears throat> but when you come out that fire should always be burning inside of you yes. but the reason why the fire dies out is because you lack intimacy the reason why fire dies out or the presence of God dies out or all of a sudden you can't hear the Lord is because you lack intimacy this is what God is saying to us tonight he said I need you to get back to 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 just me and you I just want to come face I need I I need to come together I need you to come together with just right. me and you and so I have created a war room or a place a prayer room should I say and I have a I have an area I put a I put a my prayer shawl in there I have my communion cups in there just for those of you because I'm gonna tell you what you need to do right after I have my I have my Alexa uh, and I say Alexa I want you to play worship slow worship she'll play the slow worship and I'm gonna tell you what I do I have a dim light uh, that's plugged into the wall I turn off the lights yes I do I turn off the lights and only a dim light because I'm trying to take away every distraction out of me. And I put on the music as loud as I my ears can bear or as loud as I want so that I don't hear the kids running. So that I don't hear a uh, mm -hmm. husband talking. So that I don't hear a phone ringing. My phone is on silent and my God, my phone is always ringing for someone to pray for. But my phone is on silent and I sit there and bask in the presence of God. And this is what I do. I put on worship music. I sit on my carpet that is in my bathroom. Yes, I have a small carpet that's in my bathroom with my pillows. I lay the pillows down and I just bask in the presence of God. I start worshiping just me and God. And I'm listen, I'm not doing this for, for you to say, whoa, this is what Pastor Scouts you do. No, I'm doing this to help you so that you can have an idea what intimacy looks like amen so that right. you can have an idea so that you can be encouraged that you need to do the same thing i'm telling you this every oh, yeah. person that comes to my house guess where i take them in my bathroom let's go let's visit my bathroom i, I want you to see how my bathroom looks where i set up my where prayer I room where i set up my my time with the lord and i tell you every person that goes inside <clears throat> of my bathroom and there's many of you that's on here that can can, can testify, declare, testify that, yeah. every person that they will start to weep why has it everything to do with pastor cassie Psh absolutely not has it everything to do with the white pillows and and, and the white nope. walls absolutely not but it's been saturated my god the presence of god is saturated so whenever i gotta talk to someone let's go in my bathroom shut the light i put on alexa and i tell them sit and listen that's all i want you to do is just sit and listen worship just worship worship uh, think about the words that they are saying and agree with those words that this is who you are you are the way maker you are you are the light of this world That's you right. are the Amen. bread of life you are the great i am you 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 are this you 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 call all dry bones to come alive and, and all these things start to come inside of you and then after when i'm done worshiping i'll open up the word and i'll spend intimate time with my father and I'll say, Father, speak to me. And I tell you this, he speaks. He speaks so strongly. He speaks, he warns, he, he corrects. He's, I mean, I tell you, it's the most beautiful. And then I pray. Then I pray. But while I'm praying, I open up my, my, my FIA war room and I open up all my text messages that people say, Pastor, please pray. And I, I, I open up and we start praying for all you all that's on here on the lives on Facebook. And we start praying and declaring life over you. We start declaring the presence of God over you. See, this is where it's at, people. And I'm done. He wants you to spend intimate time with him. Right. And I'm going to tell you, I would love to see you create something or make something yeah, your place of worship no i'm not talking about in the house of god your house should be the house of god your house should be the house of god in, in which he dwells in and i'm I, yeah. I i i and what i need you to do 
is I need you to if, if you wanna if you wanna decorate that place and put up scriptures to encourage you, go for it, do it. But set that place apart. Yes. And I encourage you guys tonight as we get ready to close to get a place where you can worship, where you can get down on your knees and there will be no distractions and you can pray. Put on worship music. Take away the noise of the AC and the noise of the fan and just worship and just fill your hearts with the things of God. I tell you this, you will see your life change and transform. And that's a promise. We've seen it. We know it. We've seen it happening in people. We see what God is, in do God is doing in people. Why? Because of us? No. It's because they're, they're wanting to have a personal time with God. So we encourage you. Set a place where you can set it apart. Put a sofa chair if you want. You can get a nice uh, uh, throw blanket on there and decorate it as whatever you want. Place your Bible there. I leave my Bible in the bathroom many times and my pages get warped. With a, it gets sticky. But I leave my Bible there sometimes I because I'm telling you there's things that God speaks and I, I, I tell you this. You're going to hear Him more than you've ever heard him before so listen we encourage you to do that tonight and we would love for you to tag us and throw it inside the message uh so that you we can see it just take a picture of it but we want to we want to encourage you to have that relationship with god to just to not just know about him but to know him intimately amen so if that's your prayer tonight I want you to write in here and say, I want to know him intimately. I want to know him intimately. If that's your prayer tonight, and we're going to go ahead and pray right now. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for, <clears throat> we're going to pray for everyone right now in the name of Jesus. But I want to know him intimately. I want to know him intimately tonight. If that is you, I want you, I want you to write. I want, I want to know him intimately tonight. I want to know him intimately tonight. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father, for who you are, Father. I want to know him intimately. If that's you, I want you, I want you to say, I want to know him intimately tonight. I want to know him intimately tonight. I want to know him intimately. And you know what that does? When you go back on this life and you replay it, you're going to find yourself. You wrote, I want to know him intimately. So you it can remind you that this was your heart's desire that you want to know him intimately and so if that's your prayer i want you to write it really quickly and we're gonna pray right now right now thank you jesus thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus yes i want to know him intimately oh yes i want to know him intimately thank you father thank you my king 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 I will not be overcome. Thank you, my God. I want to know him intimately. Through the valley of the shadow. I want to know him intimately. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I am not alone. Come on. I want to know him intimately. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's your prayer tonight. Just go ahead and type it. I want to know him intimately. Come on, we're praying for you. We're praying for you, woman of God. We're praying for you, man of God. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to know him intimately. Come on. Come on, any more? anymore and I want to know him intimately I want to know him intimately thank you my king thank you my king thank you my king thank you my king thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus yes my God I want to know you intimately father I want to know you intimately God yes my king yes my king Yes, my king. Yes, my king. Fear, I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. 
Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Let me tell you, don't stop wanting to know him. No matter how much you know the word, no matter how much you think you're strong enough in the Lord. I know who I am in Christ. And let me tell you, I need to, I need to know him more. You should never stop, yes. stop knowing him. It doesn't matter title. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter your works that you do. Don't stop knowing him. Don't stop knowing him. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word tonight. We thank you. Such a powerful word, Father God. Your rhema word, Father. Your living word, Father. The word that brings life, Father. The word, Father God, that breathes into dead, dry bones and bring them back to life. And Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every person that hears, every person that is on here right now, yes, in the God. name of Jesus and those that will be coming, Father, those that will be listening to your word tonight, tonight, Father God. Lord, I pray, Father God, a supernatural divine encounter with yes, you. God. I pray that you give them a supernatural yes, divine God. encounter with you. And Father God, that they will know that they need you more than anything else. Mm -hmm. That they need you more than the world itself. They need you more than their spouse. They need you more than their children. They need you more than money. Father God, take us to the place, Father God, that we can be so, oh my God, so consumed by you. That you can fill us with your glory, fill us with your presence, Father. Take us to the place where there's peace and that place, Father God, that is separated from the world, Lord, but this place of, 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 of knowing you intimately, Lord. Father God, Lord, I pray for every soul yes. on this page, God. And I pray, Father God, for their strength. I declare strength over them, Father, that they will have a passion to get to a place in their home, Father God, to know you intimately. Thank you, God. Father God, that Father, that we will not stand before you. Father, we don't want to stand before you and hear you say, I told you this. You was given many opportunities, but you still didn't want to know me. Father God, we need to want to know you. Father God, may our hearts burn, Father God, yes, oh God. with passion to want to hear your voice and wants yes, to God. know what you like and wants to know what you don't like, that we don't follow after the world, but that we may follow yes, after you, my King. God. Father God, I pray for every person on this page, God. Lord, I pray, Thank Father. You, Lord, I pray Thank for their you, life. I pray for their families. And I pray for their household. Yes, In Father. the name of Jesus. Yes, I pray Father. that your spirit will be evident. Yes, Lord. In their household. I pray for conviction. I pray, Father God, that you would convict this world. I pray that you would convict America. I pray yes, that you would convict a nation. Yes, I pray that you bring us back to our knees, God. Bring the people back to our knees, God. That they can repent, Father. And turn away from their wickedness, God. And turn to you, my God. Father God, that we may know our author and our creator. The finisher of heaven and earth, God. We want to know this creator. We want to know you. We want to know the one who said, for I know the plans that I have for you. The plans are for good and not disaster. We want to know this person. We want to know. And that is you, my king. I pray that you speak to us, God. I pray that you convict us, God. That you shake us, God. That you encourage us, God. That you empower us, God. I pray, Father God, that you will make way. My king, I pray that you... Continue to speak to us and live in us. But Lord, may your people have such a hunger for your presence. May we have such a hunger and a burning desire to know you, God. Father God, you are our life. You are our life, my King. And I pray and I thank you for being our life giver. I pray for every person that's on this page, God, for life. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you in advance for every home that will be changed and transformed. Every person, every house, we, I am the house. I am the house of God. Father God, Lord, I pray for every person, Lord, to know that if 
Father, it is our, it is our responsibility to get our life together. My King, may you be glorified in this. May they not see Pastor Cassie, Pastor Jemre, but may they see you, Father. Because if they see us, they won't take heed. But Lord, if they see you, we want them to know you intimately. When they see you, they're going to want to do more. So, Father God, Lord, we thank you for this page. We thank you for this live. We thank you for keeping Facebook open. Father, we love you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Listen, we want to thank you guys all for being here tonight. We pray that you have a blessed evening, Sister Susan. God bless you, Sister Terry. Yes, you are not alone, my dear. God is right there with you. God is right there with you. We want to make sure that you take a picture. We are so excited to see it. It just brings us so much joy. We want to see that. If you have any more questions, please message us, contact us. Sister Shani, good to see you. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle of your husband. Uh, Sister Tahani, thank you for seeing you. Sister Jolene, good to see you on top of this page, my dear. Sister Tiana, good to see you. Sister Mal Malia. Uh, Auntie Renee, Sister Nemo, Sister Angie, uh, Sister Mesha, uh, good to see you, my dear brother Corey, uh, good to see you, uh, Sister Kwan, good to see you, um, um, Sister Miley, good to see you, Sister Tahani, good to see you, Sister Abby, yes. uh, and, and our brother, good to see you, Brother Charles, he, he's a miracle in itself, man, Amen. I tell you this, what God is doing in his life, good to see you, uh, Faith in Action, family and friends, without further ado, we love every one of you. Take a picture, please. We would love to see it. Get it within two days. Post it, post it, post it. Tag us, put it on our stuff. We want to see what God is doing. And I promise you, we are confident that you will be different. Oh, you'll be a changed man of God and you'll be a changed woman of God that loves the Lord. And that you can say, I know him personally. Yes. You want to be confident that you know him personally. So I pray that this message was very very uh, uh encouraging to you tomorrow night pastor jim nope. oh pastor tomorrow nina. night pastor nina our youth pastor will be ministering i'm yes. going to tell you she's a powerful word tomorrow and this week sunday pastor jemry will be ministering if you haven't seen the message last week sunday get out of your grave clothes you better get oh, ready wow. for that get ready for that get out yes. of your grave clothes brother ian good to see you man of god get out of your grave clothes if you haven't watched it but you need to watch it. Listen, be all about what God is doing yes, in these amen. last days because he is pleased when we do it. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Go for it, Lord. In the fear of the Lord. And by the power of his grace. God bless you all. Amen. We love you all. And amen. We love you. We're praying Have for you. Have a wonderful you. evening. Praying for you.